All right, so next slide shows you a little bit of context about uh, the CND OHT to uh, contextualize our experience. We are a cohort one OHT and we are relatively small as you can see by our attributed population that's under 150,000. We're located in southwestern Ontario, so we don't have as much snow as Algoma, but it looks like we're up to about four to five centimeters right now at this point. Um, we have a mix of rural and urban geographies and an attributed population that's actually spread beyond our CND geography. We have over 40 members and affiliate members in our OHT with only one non-academic hospital as a member. And as an OHT and community, um, we found that we have a number of facilitators and barriers to our digital health and advancement. So what we have going for us is that we have a lot of goodwill and trusting relationships that were strengthened through the pandemic experience. Given that we are quite small and a quite tight knit community, we have quite a bit of nimbleness and uh, willingness to try new things uh, together. And we do have the eHealth Center of Excellence as a member of our OHT, which has assisted uh, with our work. Um, and we have a grounding um, commitment to digital health as an enabler to population health management as an OHT. This was identified early on in our application and was formalized as a component of our inaugural strategic framework uh, in 2022. What we do not have is probably similar to uh, many of the OHTs on the line is significant digital health funding beyond the investment in the staff support resource to advance uh, this work. We do have two priority populations uh, that we are focusing our population health management work on, which is medical complexity in older adults and mental health and addictions, which is important context as we look at how we've um, moved digital health uh, forward in these spaces. So on your next slide is an overview of our digital health uh, plans versus reality. And this is a bit of analysis of our survey that was submitted as part of uh, Andrew and team's research. Um, just to share how this actually shaped up for our uh, OHT. So when we look at um, our activities, uh, we were ambitious. We submitted uh, 27 digital initiatives in our initial application. And of those, um, in our analysis, 59% of initiatives were changed or never completed, while 41% of those initiatives were implemented and remain in use. So pretty similar to the averages uh, that Andrew shared for cohort one OHTs. Um, obviously, we know that the pandemic experience um, changed the landscape in health, it changed the local needs, um, and also the lessons learned from the pandemic shifted our digital health priority setting. Um, however, kind of digging deeper into commonalities across what we've pursued and then what we've um, not moved forward with, I did identify certain themes that I thought were quite interesting and again, resonate with that larger analysis at a provincial level. So for the initiatives that were not uh, moved forward, what um, we identified is that uh, some of those were actually pinning on specific solutions which have not uh, moved forward or have been sunset um, and or are sunsetting. We are part of Ontario Health West uh, region. And so um, my chart kind of shifting over now to connect my health um, the other theme around those initiatives were that they required a uh, sharing of PHI between organizations and uh, in particular with home and community care support services and given some of the transformation efforts going on at the leading practices that work has not proceeded locally. And finally, um, the initiatives that required allocation or reallocation of resources and licenses were not moved ahead. When we look at those initiatives that we were able to move forward with, uh, what we found is that it, for the most part, leveraged provincially procured solutions. And practically speaking, that meant that we did not have to put an additional investment in those solutions. Uh, we could use free or near free solutions. 
Um, next, that it aligned with our priority populations. So we've been very deliberate uh, with our population health management approach and tied the work that we're doing in the digital health space to those two priority populations. And uh, those initiatives also built on existing partnerships. Uh, so leveraging kind of historical uh, partnerships or integration and not requiring new data sharing agreements or that kind of legal element to uh, new agreements. So um, on uh, the next slide there, you can see kind of what we have been able to advance. And Victoria um, spoke a little bit to kind of how they've structured and embedded digital health as an enabler. And we've had a very similar experience. Um, in our initial application, we actually committed to developing a digital health co-design group. And we brought that group together at our inception as an OHT back in 2020. And it did feel that we were trying to look for solutions for the sake of looking for solutions. And it didn't sit well with the group. They really felt that we needed to embed digital health in our population health management work directly. And so we disbanded our digital health co-design group and instead weaved our co-design or our digital health resources right into the groups that were facilitating those clinical improvements. And that served us very well. And so here you can see our three areas that we've been able to progress in. Online appointment booking has leveraged um, some uh, infusion of funds through Ontario Health, and we've been quite successful in uptake in that space. Virtual care and secure messaging uh, with a particularly good news story around how we've been able to consolidate our groups um, in this provider to provider secure messaging platform to enable cross organizational secure messaging, which has been fantastic. Um, and then we also had a, a really exciting locally driven um, community mental health and addictions pilot project earlier this year, which brought together eight or more of our partner organizations to co-staff a clinic offering a one-stop walk-in urgent mental health and addiction service. And this was a rapid improvement exercise with uh, quite defined timelines and scope. And because of that, because it was kind of rapid and we were testing our change, we were able to mobilize our partners and, and establish these creative solutions to enable sharing of information for the purposes of the pilot. But what really surfaced uh, through that experience was that digital health is a foundational enabler to providing integrated and coordinated care by having these, um, and we like to call them kind of crafty solutions for the purposes of the pilot, we were able to facilitate collaboration and communication. And that led to a really unique and highly valued patient and provider experience um, in this particular project. And so now it's kind of turning our minds to what's that next step? What does that look like at a scalable and sustainable level, um, leveraging those lessons learned that we had uh, through that CMAC project? So Walter um, posed my question um, earlier in the chat, our question, I should say, about, you know, where where should these solutions fit? Where should these activities take place? And just acknowledging the realities of advancing digital health in a really dynamic and constantly transforming system with all of the pieces evolving at the same time. Um, it's wonderfully chaotic to see uh, the progress that we're making, but it's a challenging environment to navigate. And with limited funding at the OHT level, we've had to focus on being really judicious and strategic around our digital health focus. So we've had to adjust our priorities to add value alongside the work that's being driven at both a provincial and regional level. And in our circumstance, um, we've had this really interesting conundrum surface as we talked about um, some of the activities in the digital health space. What we heard early on uh, from both our providers and patients is that a shared care record, or at the very least, at the very least, a high level of interoperability was a top priority for building an integrated health system. 
However, developing a local solution for this would add limited value in our particular OHT circumstances, given that one, our patients in our community often seek specialist care outside of the Cambridge North Dumfries geography due to how specialized services are organized in southwestern Ontario. Um, so I'll give the example of a, a pediatric uh, specialization we take our children to Sick Children's Hospital in Toronto. We take our children to McMaster in Hamilton. We take our children to London. And so seeking care across OHT geographies. And then number two, a significant of our OHT uh, attributed population, um, over 30% live outside of our geography, um, with many of them residing in Kitchener, which is our close neighbor that we collaborate on a lot of our digital health solutions with, um, but also as far as Hamilton, as far as Brandt, and we can assume that these patients would be seeking care, um, including emergency care, urgent care services in their own home communities. And so that creates a, you know, a challenge. Should we be um, moving forward with these solutions that might not meet the needs of our community or our attributed population. So given these complexities, we've focused on local incremental improvements for our local population health management needs, monitoring both the provincial and the regional work, and anticipating, um, and I, I should say anticipating and really hoping that foundational digital health enablers, such as the integration of records, will be tackled at a broader systematic level for the benefit of our providers and our patients. And so I've offered you a reflection question similar to uh, Walter's there around where should these foundational digital health practices be planned and implemented? And my final uh, slide here, um, I feel like I'm coming in as a bit of a cynic by focusing on hurdles versus opportunities, but I uh, imagine this is my opportunity to uh, to share and maybe commiserate uh, with my colleagues so that we can find some shared solutions together. And because of transferring this from Canva, you can't see my beautiful graphic that was behind there, which was these hurdles that were kind of hopping over to reach that ideal state of patient data access, partnered data sharing, virtual care, and digital planning. So the three uh, areas that I wanted to highlight and, um, you know, hopefully to initiate broader conversations and collective action towards are one, the maturing in that dynamic environment and how we most effect effectively find the value of OHT work in that broader system that's evolving. The second is working within privacy legislation. And I saw that come out in the chat. Um, loads of challenges around how we navigate this at a local level, given that privacy advice at the level that we require is not easily accessible. It's very costly uh, and quite time consuming. And so how do we navigate that balance? Um, and then the awareness and access to data. We talked about um, partner data sharing and what that looks like. Uh, we did a bit of a count. Uh, and at last count, we have access locally to 15 data repositories at a regional um, and a provincial level that we can access to better understand our attributed population. Um, and it's a bit of a sticky area because we have all this data, but it doesn't necessarily map onto our attributed population. It's a bit cumbersome to access. And so it's time consuming to tell our story and really to know where we go for which data we need and which story we're trying to tell. So that awareness and access piece at a, at a system level is challenging. And then at a local level is also challenging. We know that our members and our partners hold a lot of really rich data, um, but practically speaking in ROHT, our staff, are employed not by the hospital, which creates a bit of a barrier to really smooth um, access to hospital records, which we know are, at least um, in our experience, really, really rich records. And we have lots of goodwill and trusting relationships. And so we're working around it with kind of collaborative uh, models, but it, it creates a challenge. Uh, so our kind of infrastructure creates a challenge to accessing that data. And of course, underpinning that is our equity, uh, our equity considerations that run through kind of all of our digital health thinking and planning.